What's up guys, welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be adding something to our new 2022 Toyota Tundra that honestly should have been from factory. So what I'm talking about is front recovery points. So I'm gonna turn this around and show you guys what I'm talking about. So this here is our new 2022 Tundra. And as you guys can kind of see here, there is nothing here as far as recovery points to one put it on a flatbed um, if you needed to tow this or have it towed and then two to use it off-road for any particular reason and i'm not sure if toyota just completely forgot it or they intentionally left it out but i'm going to show you guys what it should look like on a second gen tundra so this one here that we are currently working on is a 2018 and you guys can see here the front bumper has not only one but two recovery points in the front and you can see there the the plate that they're using isn't super thick but the recovery point is about an inch or so thick so um maybe not quite an inch but pretty close but there's that on top and this additional one so you have multiple ways of attaching whatever you want to it. And then in the rear of this 2018, we have these right here. So this one is basically this giant bracket that is attached to the frame. So we have one over here and another one on this side. So two in the front and two in the back. So you guys saw there in the front and in the rear of the second gen Tundra, there are very easily accessible recovery points to use. Now we are in the back of the third gen Tundra here. And just from down here, it doesn't look like there is any in the rear either. But if you take a closer look right up here, right here, Let's set of focus. There you go. There is a hole where you can put a recovery point there, but obviously it's not as easily accessible like on the second gen where it comes down a little bit and kind of does a loop. So that way it's a little more visible and usable. This one's tucked all the way up there. So if you were trying to use it or were to try to use it as a recovery point, you would have to use a like a D-ring or something that drops it down a little bit so that way it doesn't catch on the bumper when you try to pull with it. Now I'm gonna be showing you guys a solution to the front and the rear recovery points. Now on this table here, I have a few products from Nightop. They are a relatively new company, but from the looks of their products, they make an amazing product. So what I'm gonna be showing you guys here is a front and rear recovery point along with their hybrid or just I guess bumper so this here these two relatively large pieces here are the rear recovery points along with some hardware that will bolt into factory holes so as you guys can see they, these are beefy these are 20 pounds a piece so they will be able to be used to actually pull on stuff if you're off-road and obviously be able to use if you were to get pulled onto a flatbed um, to be towed. Right over here, these are the front recovery points. These are quite beefy as well as you can see here. They also provide hardware. Um, in addition to the hardware that bolts into the factory locations, there will be extra hardware if you wanted to really beefen up your towing capacities or pulling capacities with these recovery points. And then right up here, this is their hybrid bumper right over here. These slots here is where the red recovery points will stick out, allowing you to use that, you know, without removing anything. So there's that underneath. You'll be able to bolt these guys here. These have threaded holes on them. So you just go straight in there. So you don't have to use a nut and bolt on the back side of them now this is a steel piece as well and at first i was like well that's going to add a ton of weight but if you think about it 
this is the front of your vehicle. So if you were to hit something or another vehicle um, by accident, this is gonna take most of the hit since this is low on the truck. So as you guys see right there, that's where it's gonna sit. Now, what we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna show you guys how to install all this. So now that we are ready to install it, the first thing we need to do is remove two of these factory bolts on the back side. So we're gonna start on the driver's side. So the very first and last bolt are the two that we're gonna be removing. We're gonna leave the middle one alone. We're not gonna use that one for two reasons. One, it's gonna kind of hold the bumper in place for us. And then two, the holes that are on the actual recovery points actually only use the first and the last bolt. So what we need is a 22 millimeter socket on an impact or a rat ratchet if you like. There's a nut on the back side, but I'm just holding it with my hand and it'll come out all the way. And then we'll do the same for the last bolt. Just like that. Then we can pull these guys out. Now we are ready to move the recovery point up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold it up, grab one of the safety bolts, and we're gonna seat it through. If you need to use the hammer to kind of push it through. And then, like I said, there is that slot that is right here, right behind this piece that you guys can't see. But I showed you guys earlier. So what we'll need is the bolt that comes with a kit. We'll put that through there. I'm actually going to put the washers on these first so that way this uh, recovery is going to fall on me. So I'll just start these two factory ones. And then we're going to install the bolt that comes with the kit. And we'll slot a hole. The bolt that comes with the kit is actually a 24 millimeter. So now that we have everything started, we can go ahead and tighten everything. Bolt that comes with the kit is right here on that bottom slot. Again, it's a 24 millimeter and we're just gonna tighten it with our impact. And then we're gonna go through and torque all three of these. All right, so once we get everything torqued, this is what it'll look like from the ground. So this is a little side profile here. So it actually doesn't stick out too much if you're looking at it from the side. If you're looking from back here, obviously you'll see kind of at this angle, a lot of the metal. So it looks like there's a lot sticking out, but there's actually not. And there's two usable holes. One is for a standard D ring. And then the other one you can use like on a soft shackle. You can see here the, there's a chamfer so that way it doesn't catch your soft shackle and cut into it. But this is kind of what it is. It's a very beefy product. And I can personally say I will trust these to pull anybody out or um, do anything with them. So now that we've got the rear done, we're gonna be working on the front. So the front here, you guys have two options when it comes to installing these recovery points. So one, you can reuse the plastic valence here and just cut out those two slots to fit the red recovery points. Or you guys can do what we did, which is uh, to get the metal hybrid bumper. So that will basically replace this piece with a metal one. And it serves for two reasons, really. One, to have that recovery point, obviously. And then the second one is for protection, so that way there's a steel front in the front, so that way if we take any impacts in the front, it'll absorb it a little bit better than the plastic, which will probably just crack and break. So this next step is gonna be a little bit difficult to show you guys, but here's what you basically have to do. You see these tabs right here. You have to squeeze it and push it through, and that will release the plastic valence from the bumper cover right behind that. So there's a bunch of them all along this side here. And then there's gonna be some right up there too. So right above that cable harness right there, you guys will see some more 
clips so that you will, you guys will have to reach up and release it from there. So it's kind of a, a pain to get your hand up there, um, but luckily we have a lift that we can kind of stand underneath and reach up there. Doing this from the ground is going to be more of a pain, but it is going to be doable without removing the entire bumper cover itself because that's going to be a lot more work. Once you guys have it off, this is what it'll look like without the valence. And then down here, I'm going to show you guys what the clips look like. So this was the bottom portion. Remember, I was telling you guys to squeeze that and push it through. So all the bottom ones are squeezed and pushed. All the top ones, the part you have to squeeze is actually on the vehicle. So you squeeze it or separate it, and then you'll push these ones out. And most of them will come out. The ones that are kind of difficult are these side ones at the very corner. And some will rip like this, which is okay because they're still intact. And if you guys plan on reusing this piece and cutting the plastic for the recovery point to stick through, then you guys can install this. Even if this were to break off, then you guys will be completely fine without the corner ones. But essentially, the reason why they are so hard on the side is because that plastic valence piece actually goes under this chrome piece. So that one goes on first, and then that one, and, and then the chrome piece. So that's kind of why it takes a little bit more to yank those ones out, just because they're nested underneath. So what we are looking at is the L bracket that bolts to the crash bar here, the silver looking bar. In here, there's gonna be a 14 millimeter and a 17 miller, well, two 14s and two 17s in here. We're gonna need to pull that off and take that L bracket off. Fourteens, you gotta go from underneath. And then with this L bracket, we are gonna get rid of it so we won't need to reinstall it. Now we are ready to install the recovery point. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna line it up just like this, grab our existing or factory hardware, and we're going to install it back into the holes that we pulled them out of. Once you get them started, move on to the next one until you have installed all four back into its factory location. Then we're going to snug them down. Nighthop also gives you the option to drill two additional holes here and here into the crash bar so that way you can pull even more with the recovery points if you wanted to and they provide the, the inserts and the extra bolts for that if you guys wanted to do that if you guys wanted to skip it if you don't plan on pulling or really use it much um, and this is just kind of an emergency you guys probably don't have to but I'm going to install it just in case I do need to use the extra strength from these and I don't want these to fail if I do need to pull something heavier or get myself out of a hairy situation. So in order to do that though, we have to kind of do two things. Um, one, we might have to chop this section here in order to get a drill so I can reach straight up there, which is fine because with the hybrid bumper that uh, we purchased, we don't have to use this bottom section at all. But if you guys are retaining your um, factory plastic valence, then you guys would want to keep this to um, brace it. Then at that point, you might not want to drill these extra holes and add those bolts in. <laughs> So now that I have these pieces chopped off, pulled off some of the melt plastic a little bit to clean that up, now what we need to do is 
find the center of those holes and center punch them. We got a center punch tool here. And find center of those holes and make a mark. That way our drill doesn't slide around. Once we have marked where the center is, we will need to kind of go backwards and take this off. Now we're gonna grab our drill. This is a 960 drill bit. I'm gonna put some cutting oil on there. Find our center punch hole and drill. Once you guys have the holes drilled, there will be right next to the factory nut inserts. It'll look just like this and it'll go into the hole and eventually look like the factory ones. So what we're gonna be using is an M12 bolt and an oversized nut since we don't have a rivet tool that's big enough for this. So what we, what's gonna happen is we're gonna put a washer on the bolt, that way it doesn't move around. And then we're gonna thread our nut cert into the bolt itself. And we want it to be as close to the bottom as possible. That way, when we crush it, the nut zerk will actually sandwich itself in between the crash bar. So we made it one size too small, but that's okay because I want it as tight as possible. And we're just going to hammer it up. Once it is fully seated, we're going to grab a wrench that will fit the oversized nut that we put on there. And you can see that it moves freely. And then we'll grab a socket that's big enough for the M12 bolt that we're using. And we'll just start that until it bottoms out. Once we have installed both nut zerts and it looks exactly like the factory one, we're going to grab our recovery point. We're going to flip it over and then we're going to install it. We're going to use all the factory bolts. And then once we have the factory bolts installed, then we can install the two new bolts with the two new nut zerts that we installed. Once we have everything kind of loosely installed, then we can grab an impact or a ratchet to kind of tighten them. And what you don't want to do is over tighten them because they are just installed into the aluminum crash bar and you could easily strip it or damage it. Once you guys have torqued the recovery points, depending on if you guys got the hybrid bumper or if you guys cut the holes in your factory bumper, now you guys can install this back in. So if you guys got the hybrid bumper, we're gonna feed the recovery point through the hole like so. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna check the fitment and Nitop provides shims if we need to install them under here so that way they can go a little bit up on each side or just one side. So from here, it looks like, it doesn't look like we need any shims actually. So I'm just going to grab the provided bolts and we're gonna install it and tighten up the bolts from down here. So we got the bolts here and we just go up from underneath, line it up with the holes and start them. That way you don't have to support or hold the bumper in place and the bolts will prevent it from sliding out. We'll do the same to the other side. All right, so we got everything bolted up now. This is what it looks like from underneath. There's gonna be two bolts that secure the hybrid bumper to the actual re, um, the recovery point. That's kind of what holds this bumper on. Doesn't actually secure to anything else, but it is on there. It's solid. So 
that kind of holds that on. And then of course, the recovery points are secured to the crash bar and part of the frame underneath as well. So we'll be able to use this with complete confidence, knowing that it's gonna be safe. And it's actually quite low profile. It doesn't stick out as far as I thought it was going to. And that's a good thing because we don't want it sticking out too far. So that way it doesn't throw off our sensors. It doesn't throw off how close we get to things. But obviously we're talking about inches. So we're not really going out super far. So now we have front recovery points and a hybrid. And if you guys opted for the factory way, you guys just needed to cut this hole out. So that way this kind of comes out of there. And then let's go take another look at the rear. One last time. So there's the rear as well. So now we got a matching front and rear recovery point. All right, guys, that is gonna be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed these products, I will put them down in the description if you guys wanted to pick a setup for your own Tundra. That's gonna be it. If you guys are not subscribed to the channel already, please do so. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace.